Hello everybody and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile. This time around I'm profiling my True King Dinosaur deck for the current format. So this is a deck that I've been um, playing a lot uh, since the new ban list and it's a deck that I've been refining before I bring in the profile. I took this deck to uh, locals a couple times and I've always uh, done pretty well, usually going something like 3-1, and one, which is a pretty respectable uh, could I do better with the deck? Certainly, but I think I'm pretty happy where the deck is at uh, currently. So, without further ado, let's go into the deck profile. So, starting off with the main deck, we have our uh, Trucking lineup, which is the 1 Litho and the Triple Agamazoo. Obviously, these cards are very, very good to triggering your babies. There are uh, bodies on board that help you push for damage, or if you're going first to make calamities. Uh, with Litho coming back, obviously, you can... Um, Go through your opponent's extra deck and take out important cards uh, from it. So if you can resolve the litho, uh, always do so because it's uh, very very strong. Now for the main uh, dinosaur lineup, we have the two uh, ultimate connector Tyranno. Uh, it's Tyranno, nothing much to say. One of the best boss monsters of all time. He can just kind of um, clear boards by himself. Very very threatening. Uh, definitely. Uh, a card that you probably want to play as a two of, I think it's pretty standard, uh, three bricks and you want to make sure that you have, uh, you have like at least another copy in the deck to search it for follow up plays or special summoning off pill. Um, for the bread and butter of the deck, Triple Raptor, uh, the best card in the main deck, obviously. Uh, searches, sends to the graveyard, does everything. It's even more insane. True Kings because of all the baby effects that you can uh, abuse with Old Raptor. Uh, for the other best dinosaur in the deck, we have the Miscellaneousaurus. So Miscellaneousaurus is basically called by, not called by, but more like making your your dinosaur cards unaffected by your opponent's uh, effects, which is really good, so it protects you from hand traps and uh, negations and whatnot, this card is just super super good, as well as being a phenomenal extender in the graveyard to help you going to some of your synchro plays, or just like bringing out old raptors from the deck as a follow up play and other things uh, like that. Now for the one of, of the dinos, we have these guys, so uh, this is quite strange, I'm playing a lot of dinos that are not so common, or rather um, it varies from list to list, but I, they all have a purpose in the deck. Um, some of them suck to draw, some of them it's not as bad, but uh, all these cards are pretty good in their respective matchups. So starting off with a Direct Titano, uh, he basically cannot be targeted by traps uh, or effect um, effect monsters, which is really good, and he can banish a Drac to gain a thousand attacks, so you can banish the Aeolo from the graveyard. Uh, he's really good against, like, um, back heavy decks like um, Altergeist and Paleos that, you know, they want to use their trap cards to out your dinosaurs. This guy basically just beats them. Uh, Quatlas is Quatlas gets you your pill as well as being a spell and trap card negator. Uh, Pankratops helps you go second. Uh, Giant Rex is just like one of the best uh, dinosaurs to bring out from the deck because you can constantly bring him back and make link plays with him, make rank fours with him, absolutely amazing. And finally, the Ayolo to go into Trishula or Chambara, and uh, also just being another dinosaur uh, that you can bring out from the deck uh, very easily. For the baby dinos, we have the one petite rhino and triple baby Ceratosaurus. Um, this is the ratio that I settle on. It's my favorite ratio right now. I think it's perfect. Uh, you only really need the petite rhino uh, when you want to bring out like a specialized dino. Whether it's like um, most of the time it's a Pancratops, and there is there is like the Lost World combo where uh, you want the uh, petite tyrannodon specifically but a lot of times you're just going to be popping baby through uh diagram and things like lost world because uh this card lets you attack with the dinosaur that you summoned moving on to the hand traps we have triple copies of ash blossom and dry spring and double copies of ghost spell so uh ash blossom and dry spring is really good because it basically beats most uh matchups uh, anything that's rogue or, you know, not meta, Ash Blossom does fantastic against. And Ogre, I quite like Ogres right now because it's really good at dealing with the Spiral Double Helix, as well as other cards that, you know, have to be on the field to resolve their effects. So this is just like uh, that disruption that can sometimes uh, turn uh, decks off. Um, I might change the uh, Ghost Ogres for uh, Ghost Bells because Ghost Bell is an Earth which means that I can pop it in my hand with Lethal Sagan, but for the time being, I think Ogre is phenomenal uh, for the deck. And I think five hand traps is perfect, because it uh, gives me the option to 
um, you know, going to the pill plays. If I do open the pill, if I have pill plus a hand trap and any dino, then that's like just Tyranno pretty easily. And Tyranno is just so good at um, going, uh, chewing through barbs. Anyway, uh, for the rotor of the deck, triple fossil dig. Uh, not much to say, it's fossil dig. It just searches most of the time any dinosaur that you need. And then the other dino related spell card is. Double evolution pill. I see some people cutting uh, this card down to one. For the time being, I think two is fine. I might consider only playing the, the one of in the future, but because um, I usually save my uh, Koalas for the grindy games to shuffle back all of my resources and special summon itself, as well as sometimes being able to summon the Koalas off uh, the pill and then destroying the Koalas to get another pill. Uh, basically, this card just means that you will always have a follow-up, and that's why I like it at two. Yes, it does brick sometimes, but sometimes it's just really good, and I think um, the card does more good than it does bad, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, for the spell, uh, for the field spell engine, we have one diagram and one uh, terraforming and one set rotation, along with uh, three lost worlds. So, a diagram obviously works phenomenally with your uh, babies to do some pretty absurd combos, and Lost World is really, really good at chain blocking your Overaptor, so you're essentially playing slightly different game plans whenever you resolve one or the other, um, because they do very different things, right? But I think it's necessary that you play both of these field spells right now, just because, like, they're just so insane, and uh, they can really win you, like, some matchups like um, games where your opponent can't really like stop your diagram in Baby Sarasaurus and you have like full combo, you can make some absurd boards. And uh, uh, games where like your opponent has things that will target your dinosaurs with Lost World, and uh, not only being able to chain block with the t uh, with Lost World as well as making giving them a token so they can't really target your dinosaurs makes it really really hard for them to like interrupt you. So uh, that's pretty much it for these cards anyway. And then finally we have uh, for the spells. Uh, the triple cup of the grave and the one foolish burial so uh, foolish is just one of the best cards in the deck and triple cup of the grave means that we have even more protection from disruption uh, uh, from our opponent right so these cards are just pretty standard now before going to the extra deck make sure you leave a like comment subscribe all that good stuff and here for the extra deck we have for the synchros one trishula and one chambara um Trishula, you make it, you know, to loop a card of your opponent's hand and then go into Calamities with uh, two level fours and a Naiolo, so that's pretty good. And then Chambara, this is a weird one. So I personally really, really like Chambara because Chambara and uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno uh, is game a lot of the times. Like, this card by itself can deal, like, something ridiculous, uh, such as 4,600 damage, which is a lot. But the other really, really nice thing about it is, like, because you're using two dinos to make it, so uh, any level 4 and the Ayolo, you put them in the grave. So if you have Ultimate Conductor Tyranno in hand, uh, you can uh, special summon it by banishing those two dinosaurs, which is really, really good. So, uh, a lot of times, uh, my extract just has cards that, like, detach one or two, detach, like, two materials or need two cards to make so I can have two dinosaurs in the graveyard so I can banish them for the ultimate conductor Tyranno. Uh, for the rank 9, we have the True King of All Calamities. At one point, I had the Phantom Fortress card, but I just don't make it enough to justify it taking a spot in my extract. And if I'm ever going into a rank uh, 9, it's going to be Calamities and it's going to be on uh, me going first. For the Evil Zars, we have one Laggy, one Dolka. Uh, you don't need to run more unless you're playing Extravagance, which this is not an Extravagance build, but I like these cards a lot. Um, Solemn Judgment, Solemn Strike, you know, this card's really, really good against combo. This card's really, really good against control. Uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, Evil Zars. Now, for the rest of the rank 4 package, we have one uh, Light Dragon at Ignister. This card's the nuts. This card is basically like the new one of the new best uh, rank 4s to come out uh, because you can make it with just two level 4 monsters. And the way I, um, I explain this card to people is Mini Dingir Su. That's literally what it is. It's destruction that doesn't target and also gives you protection. So this plus Tyranno makes it so that like you can protect your Tyranno from your opponent's t uh, targeting effects, which is really, really crazy. On top of also just being removal. The only problem with this card is that like it attaches for cost. And so if the opponent uh, destroys it because like it's up to the number of at Ignisters, it can fizzle. But detaching for cost is not the worst since it sets up your graveyard and just giving you that protection is pretty nice. Also, because the card has 2300 uh, attack, uh, it can get over a few, a uh, couple of things. So that's pretty nice. 
uh, one tornado dragon to just deal with uh, back row if you have two uh, level fours, one exotonite for going second and uh, help you break even more boards, uh, one Duggarus for um, you know making your Tyranno 7000 attack and just running over everything, uh, one Dweller against matchups where it's really really good and you go first. Uh, one cowboy for that time, uh, for the, you know, when it's uh, close to time or like when you want to finish a game uh, and your opponent has like 800 or less life points, uh, you make cowboy. Uh, would I play cowboy um, all the time? I don't know. Cowboy is right now the only card I'm really considering taking out of the deck, but for the time being, I think he's fine. Uh, finally, for the links, we have the one Boral Sword, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Phoenix, and one Mascarena. All these cards are necessary, uh, not necessarily the Barlow, but these guys are pretty important. Um, can you play Dinos without IP? Of course. However, IP enables you to have some pretty nutty uh, boards that uh, can be quite difficult to out. So sometimes I've made boards where I have like IP, um, uh, what is it, uh, Lagia? Or, no, Dolka, sorry, the, the Swamp Strike, Dolka and uh, Pancratops, and that's just super, super good because you have, like, a ridiculous amount of disruption uh, with those cards, and it's, like, it's something the Dinos were not able to do prior to Mascarena, but now they do have that option, and you should definitely take advantage of it. Now, for the side decks, the side deck is pretty simple. I don't really side heav like, I only really side heavily against, like, specific matchups, uh, those being... Uh, things like Spiral, I need something like Kaijus, definitely Kaijus over Lava Golems and whatnot because I kind of need my normal summon, and sometimes taking the Apollosa or taking the uh, Sleeper can be quite good. A lot of times just taking the Apollosa makes it a little bit easier to play through. Uh, then for more uh, side deck, we have triple copies of uh, Cosmic Cyclone and triple copies of Twin Twisters. This is again for those uh, back row uh, matchups. And then to wrap it up, we have one um, Red Reboot and double uh, Mind Control. Um, I think I'm missing a couple cards, so I have like, what, three, six, um, three, six, nine, five, uh, 12, 13. So you can definitely add like any other two cards that you want. Um, but I don't really know what I want right now. Maybe like two double copies of Nibiru um, would do quite well since you can like play something like Gallant Granite to add the Nibiru to the hand. But I think right now this is a pretty good starting point for a side deck. So just uh, choose something uh, that you think might fit your local metagame or your regionals and add those to the uh, side deck. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, deck profile. Again, if you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.